A lot has changed since the last video, so make sure you're paying close attention, but we're going to be starting here under graphics and the quality tab. Now make sure your render resolution as always is at 100. And I recommend you guys use Fidelity FX Cast for the max amount of visibility possible in Warzone 2. But this does come at the cost of a lot of performance because you could be switching this to Nvidia DLSS or you could be using AMD FSR and you could be getting a massive boost to performance. I mean, look at the FPS difference is on screen here what these settings are doing is upscaling a lower resolution so it makes your game almost look kind of blurry almost like vaseline's kind of smeared on your screen which is why i don't usually recommend you guys use one of those settings because it just hurts visibility immensely but if you do decide to use nvidia dlss you're gonna choose it here click show more and then i recommend using quality and then make sure dlss sharpness is turned all the way up and if you are gonna be using amd fsr click show more again I would recommend using ultra quality for that setting. Anything lower than that is going to look just absolutely terrible and it is not worth it in my opinion. But I highly recommend that you guys do use Fidelity FX Cast and then click show more and then change the strength here to 75. The strength right here is sharpness. So if 75 looks too sharp for you on your monitor, just bump it down a little bit. But if it doesn't look sharp enough, then you could bump it up a little bit as well. But use 75 as a starting point. Now, anti-aliasing is is really annoying in this game because normally I'd like to turn anti-aliasing off because it gives a massive boost to performance and visibility but there's only two options you 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 can't even turn it off which is very annoying and if you do turn it to SMAA 2 T2X and then put it on the lowest setting that gives you the best visibility but there's a problem with that it almost adds like this noisy effect to your screen as you guys can see on this white wall here it looks absolutely terrible and just ruins the visual quality of the game and it's very very distracting but if we come back into the settings and we turn it to filmic smaa t2x and put anti-aliasing quality to normal then you can see it really minimizes that tv static effect and the game looks overall a lot better at the cost of a few frames but getting rid of that tv staticky noise type thing is almost necessary to get rid of in this game it's just so distracting video memory scale i do have this turned all the way up but if you are are experiencing a lot of stutters try turning this down to like 70 or lower there will be a lot more fixes for stuttering issues later in the video so make sure you pay attention for that texture resolution we are setting this to low and i know there's going to be some people out there saying i don't want my game to look like absolute crap so i don't want to put texture resolution on low but if you look at the difference here the game looks virtually the same on low and high now you will notice i'm not getting a huge boost to performance between using low and high and that is because i have a 3090 graphics card so keep that in mind when you're looking at the fps difference here because for the majority of you guys who are using a lower end graphics card the difference in fps between using low texture resolution and high texture resolution is going to be absolutely massive and then we're going to be putting texture filter anisotropic on low nearby level of detail on low and distant level of detail on low a lot of these settings are going to be on low because the game is running like absolute crap right now but is it is absolutely essential that we put almost all these settings on low but there are some that we're going to want to bump up which we will cover flutter draw distance we want this set to short particle quality we want this on low particle quality level we want this on very low bullet impacts and sprays we have this turned on and then shader quality is something that has been changed in the previous video i recommended that you guys put this on medium because if you put this setting on low your gold camos and some of your camos would look terrible like the gold camo almost looked like mustard but they did fix that so you can now put shader quality on low and get a massive boost to performance and as you can see here my camos look completely normal between low and high they look virtually the same so i recommend you guys put shader quality too low now to get that huge boost to performance but keep in mind when you do change the shader quality setting you will have to reset your game for the changes to take effect and then you will have to reinstall shaders once you are back in the game tessellation we're turning this off terrain memory we want to set this to minimum and then on demand texture streaming off here and then scrolling down we want streaming quality set to low volumetric quality set to low deferred physics quality off and water caustics off shadow map resolution we have this set to very low in the last video i told you guys to put this to normal because it kept resetting and in my opinion putting shadow map resolution is actually better for performance obviously 
but it's also better in game because the shadows look a lot more dull and they're not quite as present so if someone is hiding in the shadows they're going to be much easier to see with this on very low screen space reflection we have this turned off spot shadow quality we have this turned to low and then spot cache right here now turning this up to high can actually help you fix some of your stuttering issues but you do need to combine this setting with another setting inside of the nvidia control panel which i will cover in a bit so make sure you stick around for that particle quality we want this set to low and then ambient occlusion here we have this turned off screen space reflections turned off static reflection quality on low and weather grid volumes here we have turned off and then nvidia reflex low latency we want this turned to on plus boost scrolling down we have depth of field world motion blur and film grain you want all that turned off it's just going to affect visibility moving over to the view tab up top also don't forget to apply your settings here field of view is you know it's personal preference i like using 120 it's just a lot easier to see more of my surroundings around me and I'm more aware I feel like that way just use whatever field of view works for you and then ADS field of view as always use affected here this is gonna just help your recoil control immensely and then weapon field of view we want this set to wide it's gonna make your gun appear smaller so you can just see more around you it doesn't affect when your ADS third person field of view I have this set up to 90 but again field of view is generally personal preference and then field of vehicle field of view I have this set to wide and then first and third person camera movement we want these both set down to least so your screen's not shaking all over the place during the middle of gunfights when explosions are going off and all of that and then third person ads transition i recommend using first person ads for that and default spectator camera we want on game perspective there is a bug where you do get the shoulder perspective when you're spectating someone and that can be really annoying all you got to do is press triangle or y on your controller but i honestly have not figured out a way to to uh, switch perspectives and game on mouse and keyboard. I'm still trying to find that one. Going over to the display tab here. As always, I recommend full screen exclusive, least amount of input lag possible when you do that. And then screen refresh rate and your resolution, just make sure those are set correctly there. Dynamic resolution, we do want this turned off. We're leaving aspect ratio on automatic. And then V-Sync in the game playing menus, always turn these off. V-Sync does fix screen tearing issues, but that is at the cost of a lot of input lag. And we do not want want input lag in first person shooters custom frame rate limit here i set it to custom then i click show more and put gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up to 300 so that way when i'm in the game my frame rate limit is basically on unlimited and then i set it to 120 frame rate limit for in the menus just so my menus feel a little smooth but you could put it to 60 as well and out of focus custom frame rate limit doesn't really matter and scrolling down here to brightness you should know by now that this is literally going to depend on your setup right you just want to make sure that this middle logo here is barely visible when you are adjusting your brightness here and then high dynamic range or hdr we want this turned off the only reason you'd ever want to use hdr is basically if you have an oled monitor right but there is some of those coming out soon which i'm really excited about moving over to the interface tab here so we're gonna go to color customization um and once you load into this you're gonna see color filter at the top we're gonna want to use color filter 2 and we're going to set color filter target to both. And then we're going to put both of these intensity levels all the way up to 100. Seeing yours or your teammates pings in this game can be very frustrating sometimes. They're almost invisible, it feels like. So what you can do is scroll down to neutral right here. You're going to click on that. And then you're going to click on basic color here at the bottom. And then you can choose whatever color you want your pings to be in the game, which is going to make it a lot easier to see. And then once you choose your color, you're going to want to click on custom color here and change your saturation and your brightness all the way up. And then then click apply custom color and that's going to make it much easier to see yours and your teammates pings in the game we're going to back out of the color customization menu here and we're going to scroll down a little bit to telemetry right here what i do is i set this to custom and click show more and this is how you can see your fps counter your server latency anything you want displayed in the top left hand corner of your screen can be set here then we're going to scroll down a little bit we want skip introduction movie turned on so we 
we don't get that every time we load the game it's annoying and then parallax effects i recommend turning this off this can help fix some of the stuttering in the menus center dot here i like to turn this on and set center dot scale to larger what this does is it adds a little white dot in the middle of your crosshairs which makes it a lot easier to center so i recommend trying that out and then we are all done in the interface tab now for audio guys audio in this game sucks i mean i've tried every single audio setting and nothing's really helping footstep audio you can't hear parachutes flying in no, no matter what you do it's just a game issue at this point and they need to fix it but in my experience i have found that headphone bass boost was working the best but i mean i keep switching between these because the sound issues in this game are driving me nuts earlier in the video i recommended you guys set your spot cache to high to help fix some of your stuttering issues but we need to combine that setting with two other things which i want to go over quick so you want to go to your search bar in windows and you want to type in game mode and you're going to see game mode settings pop up here now obviously we want to make sure game mode is turned on and then on the right side we're going to click on graphic settings and you'll see hardware accelerated gpu scheduling normally i recommend you guys turn this on and normally you would want it on for most games you play because it, it just helps with performance and latency as it says literally right here but having this setting on has been causing a lot of stuttering issues inside of the game so i recommend that you guys do turn this off now keep in mind that after you do change this setting you're gonna have to restart your pc for the changes to take effect and then we're gonna open up the nvidia control panel so right click your desktop and go to nvidia control panel we're gonna click on manage 3d settings here at the top and you're gonna scroll down until you see shader cache size right here and you're gonna want to change that to 100 gigabytes now combining that with turning hardware accelerated gpu scheduling off and then the shader cache to high in game changing all three of these things should help fix stuttering in game i know it has for me now keep in mind when you are switching this to 100 gigabytes right here though you need to have 100 gigabytes free on your computer and the drivers i am personally using on nvidia are 526.86 and i am having literally zero issues with stuttering if you are having issues with that i definitely recommend trying that driver out but if you aren't having any stuttering issues whatsoever i just i wouldn't mess with drivers but i'm just gonna scroll to the top here and then scroll all the way down through all my nvidia control panel settings right here for you guys to copy and then we're gonna click on change resolution right here just double check that your refresh rate is set correctly you don't want to be playing on 60 hertz if you have a high refresh rate monitor and then scrolling down here we want to check use nvidia color settings and make sure output dynamic range is set to full now remember earlier in the video we did change those custom color settings in the interface panel now what you can do is change your contrast here to 55 and your gamma to 1.15 and then your digital vibrance up to 75 percent and that combined with the color filters in game makes the game just look absolutely beautiful and just makes your visibility so much better this is under the adjust desktop color settings here on the left for reference don't forget to apply your settings and then we can close out of the nvidia control panel now i should mention that those color settings might look a little too saturated for some of you guys and if they do just lower that digital vibrance tab a little bit and if you want it a little more vibrant then you know turn that digital vibrance tab up a little bit all the other window settings i gave you guys in the last warzone 2 settings video are still the same besides using hardware accelerated gpu scheduling of course but if you haven't seen that video yet i will link it down below but if this video did help you out i would really appreciate if you guys consider coming over to my twitch and dropping a follow i do stream monday through saturdays normally it's just twitch.tv slash websy otherwise link is at the top of the description make sure to click subscribe if you're new here i do these every single time a new season comes out and i'll see you guys in the next video use the web peace